So how to scale profitably on TikTok. Uh, before we jump in, I'll just give just a quick background. Um, thanks, Michael, for the intro. We work with, you know, D to C clients. That's our bread and butter. Um, and really we we scale them through through advertising. Um, we're a growth partner. Uh, we leverage paid media channels, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Google, um, you know, to grow businesses profitably. Uh, we have a 60 person in-house creative team uh, and we also focus heavily on the landing page. So we like to uh, full, like to control the full funnel from creative through to landing page. Um, and, you know, we're seeing a ton of success with TikTok. I think everyone's pretty excited, I, um, you know, obviously with the digital attention that's shifting there. Um, I think, you know, the, the there's a lot of hype and and I think I like to cut through a lot of the hype and just be really real with with what is actually happening um, for founders and, and, and owners. Um, so, yes, obviously we're seeing a, uh, a, a shift towards um, TikTok from a, uh, a digital attention standpoint. So you can still you can see here, um, you know, 56 percent of people are not on Instagram. Uh, Forty-five percent of people are not on Facebook, so it is truly a unique audience. These stats are, are fresh from from TikTok this morning, um, but I think the the biggest thing uh, that I that I think is is maybe overlooked is is just the age and the demographic. So yes, we all know it's core Gen Z. You can see thirty-seven percent of people there are, are eighteen to twenty-four, um, but really, like it's what surprises some is just the the older generations that are slowly moving onto this platform. So. You know, 27% of people, um, uh, you know, are age 25 to 34. I know my wife, she spends more uh, more time on TikTok than any other platform and she's 30. Um, and, and we are just seeing an evolution, you know, and if you look at um, that 25 plus age group, really that's, you know, 60% of, of TikTokers. And even if you just cut it at 34, you're seeing around 35% of, of, of uh, 35 to 40% of, of TikTokers uh, are above the age of 34. So it, um, if you're a brand and uh, if you're an e-commerce brand, you need to be on it regardless of, I think, um, maybe the the audience that you think resonates with your product. Um, it's getting older and older by the minute. And so definitely want to encourage um, the listeners on the call to, to, um, to start forming up their strategy. And I think that involves both organic and paid. Those two things really work together. So um, really excited uh, about what we can go through here today. Um, the, the core pillars here, high impact creative, strategic media buying and measurement. Doesn't need to be any more complex than that. High impact creative, I think everyone understands that we need to be developing TikToks. I'm gonna go into more detail. Um, media buying is, you know, how do we set up the ad account? It's not terribly um, complex, but there's a couple of tips and tricks that I'm gonna give you guys today that um, are really important. And then measurement. Um, we're going to talk a lot about how to measure the, the results of, uh, of what we do on TikTok. Um, so let's talk about content. Content is king if it's native uh, and innovative. So I think this is really self-explanatory, but we can't use lifestyle and we can't even use user-generated content from other platforms on TikTok. And we have worked with brands where it's the easy thing to do. We all get it. You know, it's, it's hard to find TikTok native content thing to do is to run it on what you're running on the other platforms and if you want to scale profitably you know cpa return on ad spend that's a really hard thing to do it's it's almost impossible so it has to be custom to the platform um one of the slides i've got coming up says don't create ads create tiktoks so they need to be really native and and, and organic and and fit within in the medium that you're communicating to your audience so um some of the ways that you can get that We've got clients that have just really innovative, great um, internal teams that that understand how TikToks work, and uh, they encourage their team to create, you know, content themselves. That's not not an easy thing to do, um, but but is really helpful when we work with those type of clients. The other part is um, the the creator marketplace. So if you're not familiar with the the TikTok creator marketplace, it's basically a tool that it's like a a content search engine um you can just literally google TikTok content creator marketplace and you can uh you can basically have a direct access to creators you create a brief exactly what you want you can see the individual you can uh in the brief before you submit you can say is this going to be a paid opportunity or not and you'll actually have creators um 
uh, apply, you know, for that job, you know, so it's, it's a really powerful tool where you can have direct access to basically anyone on, on TikTok. So if you haven't tried that, that's a great source for us. Um, at Mute6, we've found great success with, um, you know, scaling our, our content efforts and finding new influencer relationships. And then the next bucket is, is influencers. So um, obviously these people, you know, I think there's a big difference between a content creator and an influencer. An influencer has an audience, an influencer is, is someone of note. And generally that person, you know, you're probably going to have some sort of contract negotiation. Um, you know, the expectation is definitely that there's money being ex exchanged. And in some cases it can be, you know, quite a lot of money, um, and content creator more just like your, your kind of everyday person that, um, is just getting started and, and a great way to keep your costs low. Um, and then also the where to find partners uh, and, and TikTok created creative exchange is actually a great way to find vetted TikTok content partners. And these are businesses, studios, other agencies. Um, this is a great place to uh, to work with, you know, more established, but most importantly, the vetted uh, content uh, content creators. Again, Google TikTok creative exchange and, and you'll find what partners are available there. Um, so here, just as I mentioned, don't create ads, make TikToks. These are like standard like templates you guys would have seen. Anyone that's familiar with TikTok, uh, you've you've got these categories or these trends essentially. So you know, on the left, we've got the voiceover. TikTok made me buy this. Uh, in the middle, green screen effect. So you know, someone reviewing um, a particular product. These are all ads that we have created for our clients. Um, comment reply, which is you know, someone answering a comment from an actual video um, and then text to voice, which, you know, is is that, you know, Siri voice that I'm sure all of you are familiar with. So we've kind of identified a, a set of trends and they evolve very, very quickly. But, you know, some of these have been around for a long time. And so you're able to at least start with a framework. I think sometimes it can be quite, um, you know, quite uh, overwhelming in regards to like where to go from a creative standpoint. So, um, but we've found from a, an advertising direct response, direct revenue standpoint, um, this, uh, these type of, of templates have, have been really effective for the clients that we've worked with. Um, and one of the most important parts is just the testing and, and the testing process. So this is a bit of a framework that we've developed where those were the concepts that we spoke about. So we spoke about text to voice, um, you know, answering the comment, that would be a concept. And then underneath, we create multiple variations. So it could be one, one time you start with the face, other times you start with the product, but identifying what are the key variations under each concept and then testing the different variations. Um, as you find a winner of that variation, you test variations within that. So the hardest thing to do is get the concepts right because you have to find the influencer you find the content creator um you can tell them you know this is what i'm looking for but getting them to create multiple iterations so then you can test that within your uh your media buy setup and we found just kind of this constant test and learn process where you're actually getting closer to um you know the, the ultimate creative that performs and a lot of the time we're using um, metrics that are much beyond CPA and ROAS. Of course, those are key. Uh, we use metrics like thumb stop rate, which for TikTok is two second video views divided by impressions. Is my content capturing attention? That's the first indicator that you're gonna get if, um, yeah, if, if you're stopping people in their feed and how long are they watching the, the, the video for? So, you know, 50%, uh, 10 second video views, 30 second video views. Um, and just forming up the picture, how, how are they engaging up front? And then are they, are you remaining, are you keeping their attention as you go through? Uh, and, and really setting up this wheel, looking at a combination of CPA and ROAS, but then also the creative metrics helps us understand what part of the creative needs to change. Um, but, you know, if there was one thing to leave from this presentation, it would be that creative is, is the most important part on TikTok, which I'm sure um, the audience has, has figured out by now. Um, and then, yeah, so TikTok media strategies, I think I can be, be brief here. Um, from a audience standpoint, so at the moment, the biggest challenge on TikTok is measurement. I'm going to get into that in the last few minutes that I have. Um, but essentially right now, if you TikTok, the TikTok is single session. So I literally have to click on an ad and purchase in that single session 
uh, to be attributed um, to TikTok ads, which is very, very, um, you know, it's very basic. And, you know, often we, we don't see the attribution within the platform. And also within remarketing, you can only target people that have come from TikTok ads. So your pixel, pixel data that you're getting from all of your other media efforts are not actually, um, you're not actually able to target those people with ads, which is kind of remarkable. Um, but that's all changing literally within the next couple of weeks. And I've got some, uh, some slides on, on some of the measurement uh, changes that have happened in the platform as of literally last week. Um, but from a media standpoint, so, so with the limited retargeting at this um, point in time, really retargeting is about 10% of your spend. 90% is, is, is acquisition, is completely new, uh, new eyeballs. Um, and they do have the ability to upload customer lists um, and uh, also you know, pixel lists and to create lookalikes. Um, I know in the beginning, anyone who's running ads a year ago, you couldn't do that. So it is starting to evolve. Um, and then really just leveraging broad audiences and, and, and lookalikes. I think probably the, the, the most basic part of, of TikTok is the media. You need to make sure that um, you know, you're using uh, your lists, you're keeping your retargeting percentage low. Um, but apart from that, it's, um, it, it's relatively easy. And then I think the, the only other part that I think is really worth calling out is um, you know, your, your TikTok optimization events. So within the first, when you, whenever you start your advertising on TikTok, you have to get 50 conversions per week in the optimization event that you have chosen. And, and you have to start at view content and move your way up. So there's, a, there's basically a, a pixel warming process that takes time um, to, 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 to warm that pixel up. And once you get 50 uh, attributed events for view content, you then have to move up to add to cart and then up to purchase. And, and the ultimate goal is to drive purchases and optimize for purchases. But initially you do have that pixel warming process that has to happen. Um, and I would say it's it's harder to get results initially at a, on a completely cold pixel. You know, if you think about F Facebook, you can, you can kind of get going from straight away. With TikTok, it does create take time, and they need a little bit more data um, up front. So, if if you're really confident in, in your content and you're not getting results in the first couple of weeks, I would give it a little bit more time um, as TikTok starts to learn about your business and who's responding best, you know, to your to your media efforts. So, talked about uh, the product updates. Um, these are major changes that have just been rolled out. Um, Mute Six was uh, lucky enough to be uh, involved in in these attribution betas. Um, I'm currently in the office here in Los Angeles. We share an office with TikTok. They're at the floor below us, uh, and we've got a great relationship with them. We were one of the first agency partners to partner with them, um, and and one of the advantages of that is this um, the attribution beta that's just been rolled out. So now we can finally start to see different attribution windows. So as I mentioned before, um, once this beta is adopted across the platform, we can see seven day click, one day view attribution. So we're starting to get a little bit more time and be a little bit more generous to TikTok's role in the purchase journey. Um, and that's been massive. I think on average, we've probably seen a, about a 25 to 30% improvement in return on ad spend and, and cost per acquisition just by that one attribution change uh, alone. So um, the, the product roadmap is, is really starting to catch up and we've got a lot of faith that if there's people on the call that are not getting return on ad spend now and their content is really dialed in, that that will start to change as it, uh, as we just better attribute um, attribute what TikTok is doing. Um, and then, yeah, just the conversion sandbox. So this is actually allowing us to track cross device. So we talked about the, the extending of the windows, but now also cross, cross device and, and cross platform. So this has just been rolled out. Don't have any data on, on um, its, uh, its performance. Uh, but another advancement, which again is going to allow TikTok to, it's not, not only just about tracking, but also to make better decisions within the algorithm. And that's what we're most excited about is, is, is to get conversion and intent signals and communicate that back to TikTok. And that's what a lot of these, um, a lot of these changes uh, are, are doing. And then finally, just Spark ads, which uh, if you haven't tried Spark ads, is literally just a boosted influencer post. We just use their 
their post and we run ads against that, it's probably one of the best performing ad types for the clients we work with. Um, so it's super easy. You get an influencer to post on TikTok and you take that ID and you run it as an ad. Um, it's incredibly effective and, and probably the best performing ad type. So I wanted to make sure I, I, um, I called that out. 